What's going on, guys? Yo, I love this intro song. It is your motivation guy. That's right, man. The one and only your friend, Keith Allen. You know, if you're feeling down, the best way to get out of that is actually by encouraging somebody else. It's actually becoming that motivation for someone else. So I want to encourage you today. If you're kind of going through some rough patches, going through a rough week, I want you to start encouraging people today and just see what happens. So historically, you know, solo squads have been a fantastic way to get good quick, right? Having to go up against multiple players by yourself forces you guys to like think outside of the box and utilize every ounce of talent that you can just muster up. But ever since skill-based, you know, matchmaking was implemented, winning solo squad games has become like a lot more intricate. But one streamer out there still grinds them, right? And every now and then, you know, he'll pop off with a huge game. So today, we're gonna be looking at how phase replays, you know, dominate solo squads, man. And along the way, you know, we're gonna be periodically asking you guys, you know, what would you do if you were in his shoes? So you gotta pay close attention on what's happening and maybe you're gonna get all the answers right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, for my question of the day, have you ever won a solo squad match? And if so, let me know the details on this one, all right? Tell me like how many kills you had and what season it was in. Leave it in the comments down below. Really excited to hear what you got going on. And before we get into this video, okay, if solo squads are like what you're trying to improve at, you can always check out ProGuides.com. All right, so we have tailored made courses structured to help you guys get better, like no matter your skill level, right? Including like the one that goes over solo squads. So be sure to hit that like and sub to the channel, hit that bell, and then head on over to ProGuides.com to get started. All right, guys, ladies and gentlemen, it's about that time. Yo, it's time to sit back, come on, relax, and grab some of my favorite candy. What well, it's that bunch of crunch, you already know that. Let's get this going. All right, so now the first thing we need to talk about is replays drop. He's going for high kills here. It's not like really about getting the win for him or else like he lands somewhere safe. But he wants to put on a show for his stream, yo. So he's picking the hottest drop in the game, the agency. And right away, he gets the best super chest like I've ever seen. Purple pump and full shields? Hmm, talk about a great start, huh? Okay, all right, so off the bat, I wanna ask you guys, how would you play this? Would you try to hide and wait until the action dies down to look for some kills? Or would you play aggressively to look for some fights? Well, during the early game, you really have to take advantage of the chaos, right? So much is going on that most squad players can't even keep up and they separate all the time. You know, it's not like, like they're landing right on top of each other. No, average squad players pick their own chest and they do their own thing for the first minute or so. If you wait, you're just giving them time to regroup. Instead, it's better just to see what stragglers you can find early on. And that's what you'll see replays do, man. Look, he's always hunting. You know, he's always looking for the next frag. This one right here almost ends in disaster. He whiffs a shot, then tries to build without max. Definitely a misplay, but luckily his opponent does no better. And that's just part of replay's instinct. He's always looking to build after every shot since the most critical factor in solo squads is that, right? You gotta always be building. Now, if you're trying to get into like as many fights as possible, it's crucial to know rotation routes specifically like when you find other players, right? Now, we're gonna get into that in a sec, but first, Replay sets up a launch pad to scout for players. He spots some bills in Salty Springs, so he checks it out, right? And somehow, out of all the players, <laughs> there's only one guy left, the most adorable fish stick we've ever seen. Seriously, like, out of everyone at Salty, really? How was this guy able to survive? He might be an AI, I honestly can't tell. Either way, the storm is about to close in, and if you paid any attention to the minimap, you're gonna know the right side is closing over the agency. So if Replays wants to find more players, where should he head? Deeper into the zone or toward the agency where the circle is closing in? Well, he does a quick check to see if he can spot anybody, right? But since he doesn't, he heads back to the agency. Why the agency? Well, you know, everybody that landed on the eastern portion of the map is being forced to rotate in that way. That's where the circle closes. So finding players on that side is pretty much guaranteed. And there's one right here, a lone straggler without a squad. This is just like one of those instances where replays confidence and his aim allows this kind of aggressive play. Check it out. This guy had no builds. Okay, so the last fight was a cinch, but this next one is gonna be tough. Replays is getting pushed by an entire squad. So this is where he can't slip up. 
or else it's game over. First thing he does though is close the gap. Like getting up close and personal allows replays to single out targets. Not everybody in this squad can keep up with the build battle and you see it here. It's only like one player he has to face like while the rest of the team stays down low and it works with a hitch. Replays gets the knock. But what would you do in this scenario, guys? Like, would you ignore the knock player or would you like just drop down for the finish? Well, in this case, like dropping down for the finish would be too risky. Like, remember this is an arena, so there's no health rewarded for like every kill. Instead, it's better at replays, keeps his high ground and uses that knocked player as a distraction of sorts, right? At least like one of their squad mates is gonna go for the res. And while that's happening, replays only has to deal with two players, not three. And again, it's like more like calling out enemies and just looking for those close quarter shotgun limbs, right? A sweet 200 pump edit knocks this guy out. And since he's not like giving up high ground or like dropping into the open, he can just safely finish them off. But when he does, he moves immediately. Replays always wants to be in a box he controls entirely. Every single piece needs to be his or else he expands out and just makes sure they are. All right guys, so you've got this fish stick in your box. What would you do here? Do you edit the ramp and go for a pump shot or do you edit out the sidewall and just go for the kill from there? Replays goes for the less predictable move and he edits his wall for the kill. All right, so the ramp edit play could have worked, but with 74 health, it's just too risky. And it's not like Fishstick is going anywhere. None of these pieces were his, which is an essential lesson in peace control. All right, guys, don't ramble into boxes and not put your own cone or ramp down. It just leads to situations such as this one where you're stuck with next to no recourse. All right, so with Fishstick down, it's just one-on-one -on -one right here. All right, so the last player is actually the first one that got knocked. And with this whole team now deceased, he's out for blood now. Still, Replays does a terrific job, you know, protecting himself as he builds up. When trying to build up to someone on hype, it's not the speed that matters, guys. It's the avoiding shots. Even if it slows you down, make sure to build cover on your way up. But in the end, Replays tags this guy down, and with a quick Mongo Classic finisher, he sends this squad back to the loading screen. Now let's jump ahead into the end game. All right, 14 players are still up and most of them are about to enter into this fight right here. How replays acts in this engagement is a prime example, dude, like of how you want to position during a hectic battle. So the first thing you'll notice is box control. We talked about it already, but it's just so important. Always control the pieces around you, just as replays does when he goes for the kill here. He even does a bit of extra piece control, like putting up a metal wall to block his guy's escape. It probably didn't matter here, but hey, <laughs> it's a look great thinking ahead move, I guess. Okay, so after this one kill, there's a ton of enemies swarming around trying to find replays, so he's not gonna go crazy or anything like that. He's just waiting patiently for the right opportunity. And right here, and I mean like right here, the opportunity has arrived, yes. He hears one player spraying at his metal bills, another one is swinging their pickaxe. Both of them are distracted, and so he makes the play. This is why you wanna build around yourself, guys, so you can't get dummied on like this John Wick here. Okay, so, but after this kill, all right, things start to get a little crazy. A third party starts spraying replays bills, and the hits almost end this guy's life. But again, this is where staying on the move proves useful. He expands out into new boxes, making sure to position away from the rifle spam. And look at that. The third party stops shooting cause they lost track of replays. It's really as simple as that. All right, so at this point, replay found his next target. He takes the wall here, but that's when a couple of players start gliding in. How would you guys play this one, all right? Would you like expand out to a new box or would you jump inside your opponent's box here for the kill? Okay, so we've been talking a lot about like how vital box control is. So I hope you guys got that right, all right? Anyway, replays expands out, his opponent does it and thus they get knocked. So there's really not much more to say. I mean, like replay is like mopping the floor with these guys, right? And look at how his patient pays off here. Wow, that aim is nasty. <laughs> Sometimes in these end games, you're like, you don't have to be like crazy aggressive. If everyone else is fighting, there's really, really no point in just drawing attention when you can just sit in a box and just look for the cleanups. All right, guys, so jumping ahead to the very, very end, this is the final fight. Get ready for this one. Replay tries to get that high ground, but the enemy RPG says, no, nah, you're not going anywhere. Now, in this situation, a two versus one, where they both like are above you, do you go for a high ground take or do you just like wait until they drop down and then go for it? 
Well, the second option is definitely better. In this case, his opponents blow up their own high ground, which allows replays to crank up. Had he tried to do that when they were both on height, would have been catastrophic. Speaking of catastrophe, this rocket right here. Wow, a little too tunnel vision there. <laughs> Luckily, replays lands a clean enough pump and wipes Mr. RPG spam out. Now it's one versus one, guys. All right, this dude is like also carrying a rocket, which must be driving replays crazy at this point, yo. But you know what? He's playing it right, man. Replays waits for his opponents to reload, then builds up. He's going for that high ground, knowing that he needs to survive against the RPG. When he hears his opponent drop, that's when it's time to take height. A quick edit out, the back into a 180. I wish this ending was a little bit more dramatic, but you know what? Not everything in life turns out how you want it to, man. Instead of a sweet finish, this dude falls to his death. GG's replays. That was a tremendous 24 kill dub, though. All right, time to recap. First of all, most squads aren't organized at the beginning of the game, and if you know what you're doing, you can easily take advantage of the chaos. If you're going a lot for kills, man, you need to know your rotations. Which side of the circle is more congested? Like, where will players be coming in from? That sort of thing. Getting up close and personal allows you guys to be focused on your targets, which, you know, should always be your goal, right? If you have the option to take on a single player or two players at once, the answer is obvious. Choose the lone target. So like one of the simplest ways to avoid death while fighting is to control every piece around you guys. This allows you to control the fight, not your opponent. When things start to get a little crazy, you gotta stay on the move, reposition, you know what I mean? Expand out and make new boxes, drop down a level or two, like whatever to confuse your opponents as to where you are. And in the end game, yo, like teams are a little bit more organized, right? So sometimes you gotta just chill out for a second. We saw a replay sit in his own box and just wait for the right opportunity, you know, plenty of times in the last fight. Nothing shameful there, just smart playing. And one final note, the whole point of solo squads isn't to win, it's to improve your skills, that's right. It teaches you guys how to build effectively, how to handle multiple opponents and the correct way to approach fights. So do not let the losses discourage you guys. Remember, I believe in you guys. I'm your number one fan. And maybe, you know, one day you're gonna end up becoming a solo squad master just like FaZe Replays. Once again, this is your motivation guy. We really hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, drop a like and subscribe to the channel. We'll see you next time.